Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa la'aqibatu lil muttaqeen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulihi ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd فقال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين المختار الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين انتہائی احترام و عقیدت اور محبت کے ساتھ آقا نامدار حضور تاجدار مدینہ رحمت للعالمین کی مقدس بارگاہ میں اپنی غلامی کا ثبوت دیتے ہوئے درود پاک کا ہدیہ پیش کریں اور پڑھیں اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم الحمد لله بجل کچھ جمعة سے ہم نبی کریم صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم کی سیرت کی روشنی میں کچھ اہم باتیں سمجھنے کی اور سیکھنے کی کوشش کر رہے ہیں لاسٹ فرائیڈے وی اسپوک اینڈ وی لرنٹ اباؤٹ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کائنڈنیس اینڈ دا کیریکٹرسٹک وچ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ بسٹاؤڈ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وتھ دا کیریکٹر آف forgiving people Rasul Azam sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the light of the holy Quran as a mercy when Allah sent him as a mercy that mean his life and the way he led his life it had to reflect this mercy which came out in the form of being kind to people in the form of forgiving people in the form of being the most tolerant in the entire human history Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in the holy Quran again praising his beloved Rasul صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم ایز وی لینڈ دیٹ محمد از نون ایز محمد بیکاز ہی از پریز بائی اللہ سبحان ہو تعالیٰ رب کریم کلام پاک میں ارشاد فرماتا ہے وما اور سلنا کا اللہ رحمت للعالمین کہ ہم نے تمہیں نہ بھیجا مگر رحمت سارے جہان کے لیے Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is stating one of the blessed quality of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi sallam and he says that we did not send you in the world but as a mercy for the entire world if we look at the wording in the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he states rahmatan lil alameen When we open Surah Fatiha, in Surah Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah is Rabbul Alameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Rahmatul Lil Alameen. With the mercy of Allah, Allah made Prophet Rahmat for the entire world. Mufassirun, they have commented on this ayah in uh, different ways 
Hadrati Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala an, Hebrew Ummah, Mufassirul Qur'an, and the Sahabi of Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam. So he says that Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam was sent as a mercy to this world, not only for the human being. He says he was mercy for mu'minun and he was mercy for those who did not believe, for the kuffar. And he was mercy beyond the human beings and mankind. If we try to understand this, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the Muslims, this is the understanding of it. لیکن جو مسلمان نہیں ہیں ان کے لیے رحمت کیسے ہیں It is easy to understand that رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is mercy He is the mercy for human and within human when we say he is mercy for مؤمنون we understand it It is easy to comprehend and process How is he mercy for those who are non-believers? So if we look back in the history, in the previous ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people would refuse to accept the message of Allah and tawheed and the risalat of those prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to punish them and destroy them. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he stated that مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah فرماتا ہے Oh my beloved Allah سبحانہ وتعالی is not going to punish them while you are among them That mean in this dunya the way there used to be punishments before because of the mercy of Rasulullah صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم Allah سبحانہ وتعالی He delayed it for the hereafter Allah تعالی نے اپنے نبی کی رحمت کے صدقے میں جو مسلمان نہیں ہیں ان کے اوپر بھی یہ رحمت فرمائی کہ ان کے لئے عذاب مؤخر کر دیا کہ پہلے کی امتوں کو اس دنیا میں عذاب دیا جاتا تھا لیکن رب تبارک و تعالی نے اپنے حبیب کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی رحمت کے صدقے میں ان کے عذاب میں تاخیر فرمائی کہ آخرت میں ان کے ایمان نلانے کی سزا ملے گی آگے اگر ہم دیکھیں اللہ ماں فخر الدین رازی رحمت اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وہ فرماتے ہیں کہ اللہ کے پیاری رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یہ دین میں بھی رحمت ہیں دنیا میں بھی رحمت ہیں that prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم's mercy it is related to the deen the religion as well as it is related to the dunya in terms of deen if we look at the background when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he arrived in this dunya at that time people were in ignorance people were away from tawheed people were bowing down to the idols that they made themselves with their own hands and they used to bow down to them this this was the level of ignorance in the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he arrived what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them the da'wat of Tawheed. And he invited them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created them. And therefore, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mercy in terms of deen. Ke deen mein bhi Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne piyari Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko rahmat bana kar bheja. Prophet is mercy in terms of dunya. Again, when Prophet ﷺ arrived, the society in terms of their moral, in terms of how they used to conduct themselves with each others, that people used to kill each other for littlest thing. And the smallest thing could ignite the wars for generations. And then those who were about to die they would request the next generation to continue this fight. It could be maybe for a morsel of food. And that would last for ages and for generations. 
when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he arrived in this dunya as a mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in the Holy Quran that وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ That remember the ni'mat and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً When you used to be enemies, mean you used to fight each other, you used to kill each other. The tribes would fight against tribes for years and generations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made your hearts to be friend with each other. He turned your hearts which had enmity for each other in it. Allah turned those hearts into soft and being friendly. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And because of this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Rasulullah came among you and he gave you the da'wat of tawheed and he brought you close to Allah and he taught you the akhlaq, فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا With the ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you became brothers. That the brotherhood they had never seen before. The brotherhood they never imagined before the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Puri zindagi lardte rahe. Sadiyan guzar gai lardte rahe. Unki naslein ismei khatam ho gai. Lekin Allah ki Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki tashreef awari ke baad Allah ne aisi rahmat bheji ke joh khun ke piyase thay ek dousre ke galay lag kar bhai ban gai. Joh apni betiyon ko zindah dafn karte thay Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne unke dilo mein aisi mohabbat dali کہ اللہ کے رسول کے ایسے قریب ہوئے کہ پھر کسی کی بیٹی کو بھی وہ اپنے لیے اپنی پناہ میں لینا اس کی پرورش کرنا اپنے لیے فخر سمجھتے تھے اللہ کے رسول کی رحمت اللہ نے اس طرح سے پیارے نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو رحمت بنا کر مرسی بنا کر دنیا میں بھیجا اللہ تعالیٰ اسی آئے کریمہ میں آگے ارشاد فرماتا ہے وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ کہ تم جہنم کے گھڑے کے بالکل قریب تھے you were very close to fall into the valley of جہنم what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do then فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he saved you from that کہ اللہ نے تمہیں اس میں گرنے سے بچا لیا کیسے بچا لیا کہ پورا معاشرہ اللہ کے پیارے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی تشریف آوری سے پہلے اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ کی عبادت کو چھوڑ کر غیروں کی عبادت میں لگے ہوئے تھے جس کی بنیاد پر وہ یقیناً جہنم میں جاتے اپنے کفر اور شرک کی بنیاد پر وہ جہنم میں جاتے لیکن اللہ کے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو جب دنیا میں اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ نے بھیجا تو پھر پیارے نبی نے ان کو ایمان کی دولت سے ایمان اور توحید کی دولت سے مالا مال کر کے اللہ کی قریب کر کے جہنم سے بچائے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم became the mean for people to be saved from the fire of جہنم اللہ نے یہ رحمت ہم پر فرمائی حدیث پاک میں آتا ہے کہ پیارے نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کسی کے بھی ساتھ یہ نہیں کہ صرف انسانوں کے ساتھ صرف مومنوں کے ساتھ صرف صحابہ کے ساتھ بلکہ جتنے بھی مخلوقات تھی چاہے وہ پرندے ہوں چاہے وہ جانور چوپایا ہو سب کی اوپر اللہ کے رسول نے رحم فرمایا سب کی اوپر اللہ کے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے کرم فرمایا that when we listen to the ayah that Allah سبحانہ وتعالی sent his beloved رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم as a mercy so he wasn't mercy only for the human being He wasn't mercy only for the animals, including jinns. If you read the chapter of uh, jinn, Surah Jinn in Holy Quran, because among jinn, there are Muslims and there are non-Muslims. Among jinn, there are those who became Sahabi when they met Rasulullah and they accepted Islam. So the way Rasulullah saved the mankind from being punished because of their kufr and shirk. Rasulullah with his da'wat of tawheed, he also saved 
those jinn who accepted the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Allah Taala ne apne nabi ko zariya banaya ki apne nabi ki rahmat ke zariye un tamam logon ko aur ham jaise gunehgaron ko jahannam se bachaya jaye. Hadis e Pak me Bukhari Sharif ki hadis e Pak hai. حضرت جابر ابن عبداللہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ اس حدیث پاک کے راوی ہیں وہ کہتے ہیں کہ جب بھی نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے کسی چیز کا سوال کیا گیا تو حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے کسی نے بھی کبھی نہ نہیں سنا دیٹ اینی ٹائم حضرت جابر ابن عبداللہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہی نریچ دس حدیث اینی سیز دیٹ اینی ٹائم اینی ون asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for anything. It could be any need in terms of dunya, any need they had in terms of deen or akhirat. The Sahabi says that no one, they ever heard la, which means no. I won't give you, I don't have it. They never heard this from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now imagine many times, you know, as, a, as an alim or as a maulana or as a charity worker, when we go to people for connection, uh, collection and ask for the donations, many times people reject, people refuse, people give excuses. This is our day-to-day -day life that most of the time we have it, but we do not like to be generous the way we should be. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam there were occasions when someone came to him and they said ya rasulullah i'm coming from far i want to stay for a night prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he sent a message in his house he said is there anything that we can feed him and we can keep him in our house the reply came there is nothing there was nothing to feed an extra person who comes to the house as a guest. And Rasulullah still didn't say, I don't have it, go. Prophet Sallallahu he would announce among Sahaba that is there anyone who will look after my guest? And they would take them. Sahaba would gladly take them. And what would they do? The Sahaba would stay hungry and they would feed the guest of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. زندگی مبارک اتنی سادہ تھی کہ کبھی مہمان آتے تو ایک مہمان کو کھلانے کے لیے دنیاوی طور پہ کوئی کھانا موجود نہیں ہوتا تھا لیکن پھر بھی اللہ کے رسول نے کبھی مہمان سے یہ نہیں کہا کہ آج میں تم کو نہیں رکھ سکتا حت جابر یہی تو فرماتے ہیں کہ اللہ کے رسول سے کبھی کسی نے نہ نہیں سنا اور اعلیٰ حضرت عظیم البرکت مجدد دین و ملت امام احمد رضا خان فاضل بریلوی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ صرف ان دو لائنوں میں بہترین انداز میں ارشاد فرماتے ہیں کہ واہ کیا جود و کرم ہے شہ بتہا تیرا نہیں سنتا ہی نہیں مانگنے والا تیرا دا گریٹسٹ مرسی اینڈ دا جنروسٹی دیٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ سینٹ یو یا رسول اللہ وتھ دیٹ وین ایور سم بڈی کمس ٹو یو دے نیور لسن فرام یور بلیسڈ تھنگ نو سمجھے نہیں دے آلویز بلیسڈ بائی رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم ناؤ Many times we think that five times salah is too hard. Many times we think that fasting in Ramadan, especially when it comes in summer, 20 hours, 19 hours, it's difficult. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he, he did think about the ummah in many aspects of the sharia. For example, there is a very famous hadith of beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam where Prophet sallallahu alayhi states, that لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَأَمَرْتُهُمْ بِالسِّوَاءِ If I had not compassionate for my ummah, if it wasn't difficult upon my ummah, then I would have made miswaq compulsory for them. Miswaq, the wooden stick that we can use to clean our, we can use to clean our teeth. It is sunnah. It is greatest sunnah that even at the last stage when Rasulullah sallallahu was departing from this dunya, he pointed at the miswak. And Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqah radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that 
Because Prophet ﷺ at that time was so weak, so I chewed the miswak for Prophet ﷺ. I softened it for him, and then I did it for Rasulullah ﷺ. Prophet said he loved miswak. Every time, many times during the day, Prophet ﷺ used to do miswak. But he cared about the comfort for the ummah so much. He says that if I, if I did not think that it would be difficult for my ummah to act upon, I would make it compulsory for them. This is the rahmat that Prophet cared about the ummah so much. And he even thought about us that what kind of commands we would be act upon, what kind of commands would be difficult for us to act upon. And therefore, he did not make it compulsory. Let's look at one of the other narration. Sahih Muslim, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates this hadith. And he says that one day Rasulullah sallallahu gave a khutbah. He was giving a speech and during his speech, Prophet sallallahu stated that Hajj, pilgrimage, has been made compulsory, compulsory and further upon you. You must go for Hajj. Now, Hazrat Abu Huraira says that a Sahabi stood up and he questioned that, Ya Rasulullah do we have to do Hajj every year? They were curious. They used to ask questions to Rasulullah sallallahu Now, Prophet sallallahu did not answer to that question. Pirsis Awal Pucha, again, the Sahabi questioned, Ya Rasulullah, do we have to do it? Every year. When he asked third time, then Prophet ﷺ replied to the Sahabi that if I tell you that you have to do Hajj every year, it will be first for you to do it every year. We come to know two things. The first thing is Rasulullah, ﷺ, even in the ahkam of Sharia, imagine if we had to go for her go to Hajj for every year for Hajj. If it was first upon Sahib Istitaat to go for Hajj every year, it would be difficult. Now, how many holidays we would be using? Imagine. First thing comes in mind when we go for Hajj, I need to book my holidays. If you're working, I need to book my holidays. Then the finances, all of these things. So, then Prophet ﷺ, he replied to the Sahabi. Rasulullah ﷺ stated that when I tell you to do something, act upon it. And do not dig by asking questions. If I said Hajj is first, that means if you do it once, first is done. The second thing we come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave this authority to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if He says that this is first for you, it will become first upon us. So he wasn't only a messenger to bring message from Allah to us and pass it on. He came with this authority. Allah, that Prophet ﷺ is stated in Sahih Hadith that if I tell you, then every year you will have to do Hajj. Subhanallah. But this was the mercy that Rasulullah ﷺ told Sahaba, do not ask too many questions and make your life difficult for yourselves. मतलब ये है कि कभी-कभी ये curiosity होती है बहुत से हमारे भाई ऐसे हैं कि जो बहुत सवालात पूछते हैं हर चीज के अंदर उनको जो है deep down जाना है this is not the way of Islam the way of Islam is what Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated act upon it if there is any confusion then ask the question Allah के रसूल ने यहाँ पर भी अपनी रहमत शरीय मामलात में जो हमारे ऊपर है उसको Irshad Farmaya. I will mention one of these story and then I will conclude on it. Ek Martaba Ek Baddu Gaon Ke Rehne Wale Sahabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ki Bargah Me Hazir Hote Hain Huzur Se Kehte Hain Mujhe Kuch De Dein A Sahabi A Bedouin Comes To Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and often they would come to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam whenever they needed any help especially when they needed any financial help they would come to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam why because they knew that 
Prophet ﷺ does not say no. So he comes to Prophet ﷺ and he says, give me something. At that time, whatever there was available, Prophet ﷺ, he gave it to that Bedouin. And then Prophet asked him a question that, did I do any favor upon you? Huzul ne dene ke baad phir usse sawal kiya ki maine tum par koi ehsaan kiya hai? Dekhiye, wo jawab mein kehta hai ki aapne koi ehsaan nahi kiya hai. You haven't done any favor upon me. Now the Sahaba who were sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they they tried to grab that Bedouin, but Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he stopped them. He went inside. And then he called that Bedouin inside his uh, house. And then he gave him more. Subhanallah. Now imagine when somebody, somebody is harsh to us. Whatever we have given them, we'll take it back. Like I'm giving you and you are being rude to me. We'll take it back. But Rasulullah was, in, was a prime example for us to understand that what is mercy and compassionate? And what is the tafsir of mercy? It is the life of beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet called him inside. He gave him more. And then inside Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, Have I done any ihsan upon you? Now listen to the reply of that Bedouin. He said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Naam ya Rasulullah. Yes, O beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa You have done ihsan upon me. And then he said, wa Allahu min ahlin wa ashiratin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you reward and bless you more. And I'm thanking you from my family and my tribe. Now, because this was inside and in front of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, when you go out, because what you said before, it has hurt the sahaba. They did not like it the way you replied to me. Would you repeat these same words in front of them? And he said, yes. The next day he came in front of Sahaba. Prophet ﷺ questioned him that when I took him inside, I gave him more and he is happy. And then Prophet looked at him and he said, Akadalika, this is how it is. The Bedouin said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, naam. And then he repeated those words. The Sahaba were happy that he showed his respect to Rasulullah because of the kindness and compassion that he saw he he from Rasulullah. At the end, Prophet, and this is why I, I, I want to uh, focus on, at the end, Prophet stated, he said that my example and your example is like a person's camel has run away. Everyone else, they trying to catch and they are chasing that camel to catch him but that camel does not stop the master of the camel when he sees people chasing and trying to catch the camel the master of the camel tells them stay behind leave the camel and then as soon as that camel listens to the master it calms down and master comes out with some grass some food for the camel and the camel very gradually comes close to the master and sits down and calms down. If people had tried to chase and get the camel, they would have heard the camel. But Prophet said, it was the master who needed to calm them down. Prophet said, my example is just like that master. That you will not understand what people need and how to treat them. The master will know. And from this hadith we understand that Rasulullah was at most merciful to the ummah and he understood our needs. He understood our nature and that's how he treated the Sahaba and through Sahaba that's how he treated in terms of the ahkam of Sharia to the entire ummah. Finally one hadith that Rasulullah stated is being quoted by Sunan Abi Dawood. Prophet stated, Shafa'ati li ahli, li ahli kabairi ummati. That my intercession is for those who are big sinners in my ummah.
This is the mercy of Rasulullah that we shouldn't be hopeless, neither from the mercy of Allah and in terms of mercy of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should always be hopeful, no matter how, how much sins we have committed, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be there to intercede for us. Meanwhile, we should focus on the seerah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we should lead our life according to the light of Siratul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala, mujhe aapko amal ki tawfiq rafiq ata farmai wa ma'alayna illa al-balaag. Assalamu Alaikum.